Hey guys, welcome to our channel. So we've been decoding man witch, changing to man witch. Um, we got our residue as evidence for the change. We got the extractions. We got the extractions to go through all the categories, surprisingly enough, um, including translations, which blew me away. And now we've got our numbers and we've got our numbers uh, to go through stock market genetics, medical, and chemical. And now we're on um, atomic numbers. So um, get right into it here. I'm not going to go through this again. I may do a video explaining this process again. I've done several, but not since I've been able to share screen here. So maybe that would uh, be a good thing to do when we're done with this, perhaps, before we move on. Um, but MN are our extractions. That's the only thing that changed in Mamwich to Manwich is an M change to an N. And then we used this chart to change M to 4 and N to 5. So you got 45, and we went ahead and took the liberty, since 9 is a pretty big number to these people, to add 4 plus 5 is 9, and we're getting that as well. So if we start with the number 45, atomic number 45 is rhodium. And it is a hard, shiny, silvery metal. Um, some major uses it looks like is cat catalytic converters. Um, it's also a catalyst, also used as catalysts as in the chemical industry for making nitric acid, acetic acid, and hydrogen re and, and hydrogen reactors. It's used to coat. Uh, optic fibers and optical mirrors and for crucibles thermocouple elements and headlight reflectors it is used as an electrical contact material as it has low electrical resistance and is highly resistant to corrosion and there's no known biological role it is a suspected carcinogen all right, so that's 45. Now we're going to go do four by itself because we can. And number four, atomic number four here, is beryllium. All right. <clears throat> beryllium is a silvery white metal. It is reactively soft and has low density. And it looks like it's used in alloys with copper or nickel to make gyroscopes, springs, electrical contacts, spot welding electrodes, and non-sparking tools. Mixing beryllium with these metals increases their electrical and thermal conductivity. Beryllium is a, or other beryllium alloys are used as structural materials for high-speed aircraft missiles, spacecraft, and communication satellites. Beryllium is relatively transparent to x-rays, so ultra-thin beryllium foil is finding use in x-ray uh, lithography. Beryllium is, is also used in nuclear reactors as a reflector or moderator of ne neutrons. The oxide has a very high melting point making it useful in nuclear work as well as having ceramic applications. And biological role here, beryllium and its com compounds are toxic and carcinogenic. If beryllium dust or fumes are inhaled, it can lead to incurable inflammation of the lungs called beryllosis, beryllosis, beryllosis. All right, that's interesting. <laughs> it can cause inflama incurable 
inflammation of the lungs. How about that? All right, moving on <laughs> uh, to number five. Atomic number five is boron. It's atomic number five. Atomic number five, right here. <clears throat> Pure boron is a dark amorphous powder. It is used as a rocket fuel igniter and in pyrotechnic flares. It gives the flames a distinctive green color. Uh, the most important compounds of boron are boric or boracic acid, borax, sodium borate, and boric oxide. These can be found in eye drops, mild antiseptics, washing powders, and tile glazes. Borax used to be used used to be used to make bleach and as a food preservative, used to. Uh, boric oxide is also commonly used in the manufacture of borosilic glass, Pyrex. It makes the glass tough and heat resistant. Fiberglass, textiles, and insulation are made from borosilic glass. Uh, sodium octorbate, oct sodium octaborate is a flame retardant. And the isotope boron-10 is, is good at absorbing neutrons. This means it can be used to regulate nuclear reactors. It also has a role in instruments used to detect neutrons. Uh, boron and biological role here. Boron is essential for the cells, for the cell walls of plants. It is not considered poisonous to animals, but in higher doses, it can upset the body's metabolism. We take in about two milligrams of boron each day from our food and about 60 grams in a lifetime. Uh, some boron components are being studied as possible treatment for brain tumors. All right, so that's number five. That gets you through going forward. Now we're gonna come back. Atomic number 54 is xenon, I believe would be how you pronounce, whoops, this. Atomic number 54. A colorless, odorless gas that is very unreactive. <clears throat> uh, xenon is used in certain specialized light sources. It can produce a beautiful blue glow when excited by an electrical discharge. Xenon lamps have applications as high speed electronic flash bulbs used by photographers, sunbed lamps, and bacterial lamps used in bacteria. Bactericidal lamps used in food preparation and processing. Xenon lamps are also used in ruby lasers. Uh, xenon ion propulsion systems are used by several satellites to keep them in orbit and in some other spacecraft. Uh, xenon difluoride is used to etch silicon microprocessors. It is also used in the manufacture of five fluorescyli, uh, fluoresce, this word, fluoresyl, a drug used to treat certain types of cancer. And it has no known biological role. It is not itself toxic, but its compounds are highly toxic because they are strong oxidizing agents. All right. And that leads us to number nine, four plus five. And fluorine. And there's an actual Mandela effect on this. Uh, fluoride, fluorine. Um, which is interesting. Atomic number nine. 
Um, it is a silver, a very pale yellow green, excuse me. It, it is a very pale yellow green, dangerously reactive gas. It is the most reactive of all ele of all the elements and quickly attacks all metals. Steel wool bursts into flames when exposed to fluorine. Um, there is no commercial production of fluorine. There was no commercial production of fluorine until the Second World War, when the development of the atom bomb and other nuclear energy projects made it necessary to produce large quantities. Before this, fluorine salts, known as fluorides, were used for a long time in welding and for frosting glass, or for a long time used in welding and for frosting glass. The element is used to make uranium hexafluoride needed by the nuclear power industry to separate uranium isotopes. It is also used to make sulfur hexafluoride the insulating gas for high power electrical transformers, high power electricity transformers, excuse me. In fact, fluorine is used in many fluorochemicals, including solvents and high temperature plastics, such as Teflon. Uh, Teflon is well known for its non-stick properties and used in frying pans. It is also used for cable insulation, for plumber's tape, and as a basis for Gore-Tex, used in waterproof shoes and clothing. Hydrofluoric acid is used for etching the glass of light bulbs and in similar applications. CFTs, chlorofluorocarbons, were once used as aerosol propellants, refrigerants, and for blowing, expanding poly, polystyrene. However, their in, inertness meant that once the atmosphere, once in the atmosphere, they diffused into the stratosphere and destroyed the Earth's ozone layer. They are now banned. Maybe. It says they're now banned, all right? So that's what I'm reading. Biological rule, fluoride is an essential ion for animals, strengthening teeth and bones. It is added to drinking water in some areas. Lovely. Uh, the presence of fluorides below two per parts per million in drinking water is believed to prevent cavities. However, above this concentration, it may cause children's tooth enamel to become modeled. Fluoride is also added to toothpaste. The average human body contains three millig about three milligrams of fluoride. Too much fluoride is toxic. Elemental fluorine is highly toxic. All right. And that gets you through going forwards and backwards in atomic numbers. And we'll do artificial intelligence next. So that's going to be it for this one. Um, I'll try to come out with artificial intelligence later today or tomorrow. So uh, for now, guys, uh, thanks for your thumbs up, thumbs down when appropriate. Thanks for your comments, leads, feedback, and subscriptions. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. And for now, you guys have a great rest of your